This video is about the work of the artist Jonathan Hutchins and specifically about a body of paintings inspired by the war poem In Parenthesis, which was written by the poet and artist David Jones. In Parenthesis is a powerful poem about the experiences of the Royal Welsh Fusiliers in the First World War in France. In real life, David Jones served in the ranks of the Royal Welsh Fusiliers, was wounded and suffered psychologically for the rest of his life. I had always been interested in the First World War um, from when I did A-level history and I'd read um, Robert, um, Robert Graves' uh, Goodbye to All That and that made a, a very big impression on me and I became really almost obsessed with Robert Graves and, and then when I read um, the bi biography of David Jones um, by Derek Scheel um, I discovered that, that David Jones also had written this um, in parenthesis which I'd never heard of before, but it's so gripping and also it's so visceral, the, the actual experiences. At, at certain points you really feel, almost more than any book I've ever read, that you, what it must have been like to be there in a, in a trench, you know, with cold feet on, hearing the, the rats and gnawing away in, in, in no man's land. And, and there's great flights of description that, 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 that just uh, grabbed me. The, the, his poetry is in, in, in passages is so strong that a few uh, words, um, you know, the, uh, a passage of two or three pages gives you lots of images for two or three paintings, you know, which, which, which is what I try, try to exploit. One of my paintings that I worked on is called The Shell-Shocked Soldier. And uh, it's, uh, it is based on Jones, but it's also related to material that I, I'm looking at. So I'm using the method of, of looking online for photographs from the First World War, looking at something I can use, so sort of like in, in the sort of Francis Bacon compost sort of way, virtually printed off so I can, I can, I can um, use it. And I found this one particular image of a, of a, of a soldier um, supposedly suffering from shell shock and he, he, he's having his hand bandaged by one of the um, medics and uh, he's, he's got this inane expression on his face and I, I wonder whether it's because he's realizing that he's going home or whether he's just totally driven but mad by conflict one doesn't know but he's got this extraordinary expression and it is, uh, I took away the uh, the, the medic because that the, and I wanted to concentrate on the actual uh, body of the soldier but also I wanted to relate it to David Jones's um, poem so in the poem he talks about looking out on no man's land and how um, you can hear the rats uh, eating up the scrut 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 eating the dead and he says how the the uh, the ravens and eagles of, of a medieval battlefield they lose their feathers and they become rats and they bristly they get bristles and they're they're going in this uh, aquatic paradise and rustling up all the um, the poor dead bodies which i suppose to us seems almost gratuitously offensive but for jones a firm catholic in a way the corruption of the physical body it hasn't got the, the same horrors uh, we are all going to corruption, but then on the day we will all be resurrected, and I think that's that's part of it with Jones's poetry. So I have the the raven on his shoulder, and also down the, the rat, uh, the happy rat that's he, he, you know, that's growing fat on the bodies. But this soldier is he happy because he's getting out of this horror, or is he just his mind's gone forever? Well, it's um, that's the picture. It's, um, Let me explain my picture of the Lanku. Was the Lanku was um, basically a ghost, a walking ghost. So that if you saw 
a Lanku, a skeleton walking towards you, it will prefigure your own death. And it's a famous one of uh, three kings, three medieval kings, who are healthy and hunting and just enjoying themselves. And then they meet three dead kings on horseback or skeleton horses. That's kind of like a Lanku tradition that, you know, be good and don't be evil, don't just live for pleasure because one day you're going to die and so be good in this world and that's it's the next world that you'll get your reward. So that's where Elanku comes from. But in this, my particular picture, I thought of the, the, the Lanku, this, this French symbol, um, coming to life and uh, burying the German dead. So you have the skeleton with his shovel in his hand, um, but he's, he's, he's had enough of death and there's so much work that he's rebelling and you know can, he wants it to stop because it's pointless it's 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 it's, it's just um, death for death's sake and uh, so Lanku is rebelling against that that's what it's really about but also it's a way of showing compassion for the other side and, and I think that's also people like David Jones who was very sympathetic if you read in parenthesis uh, towards the end he talks of the Germans being taken by the, uh, the, the woman, the lady of the woods. She comes and she takes the Germans as well as the British soldiers. So, so I think Jones was saying in that that the Germans were you know, just, uh, just the same and you know, there's no moral superiority of the British. With my latest painting that I've done this year, uh, the, I call it the um, hung on the wire like a rag merchant's stock and it comes a direct quote from um, David Jones's poem where soldiers go on a raid, uh, the young lieutenant is cut down with the sergeant the left hanging on the wire like a rag merchant's stock, hence the title of the painting. Essentially it's, it's the young sacrificed for a moment of glory, uh, uh, left uh, destroyed um, and they're at their peak, they're 26, they're, they're fit, they're young, they have full lives and they're gone, they're broken, they're smashed. Just to naturalistically paint that, um, for one thing it would be, be, it was in the morning that they were seen oh, hanging on the wire, well it would be misty, there would just be an insignificant sort of spot in the distance which you know, Jones would know it all the soldiers would know who was there, they could imagine it, they would be there, but to, to, to paint that would be an insignificant incident. So I wanted to get away from that naturalism. And in my what is like, like method of thinking to take um, classical sculptures, I, I, Greek literature, immediately you have a classical sculpture, you've, you've got that Achilles, the hero, that all, that all that baggage of Western civilization that was so civilized uh, and becoming so brutally, um, and that particularly in that war, um, that, that, that it was uh, medieval uh, in many ways. Um, and that's one of the reasons in the painting I have, the man is holding a, um, a mace, you know, a medieval mace, which is exactly the sort of thing they did carry onto no man's land, effective weapon. And I have also put, um, the skull of, of, with the helmet um, to the side. So obviously a reference to the crucifixion, Golgotha. Obviously it's the dying Gaul, so one assumes that he's not quite dead. Uh, so his lifeblood is flowing away. So I wanted to have a wound, and which has sort of crucifixion sort of connotations, the wound of Christ, and also the, the no man's land, the, the, the rotten land with with the, the hero dying in a, in a horrible place. So, so I wanted a wound and I chose um, obviously the most famous wound almost in, in, in Western art, which is um, Grunwald's um, crucifixion, the, the wound in Christ's side, side. So it's like the wound that the society war is continuing to, to um, to inflict on the Prince of Peace, especially when it's two Christian nations uh, destroying each other and killing each other. Um, you know, it's, that's, that's what you get just by using that, that uh, wound. 
um, the the use of sculpture is, is, to, to, to immediately it makes you know that it's not naturalistic, but you get all that baggage as well. And the idea, essentially, the, the, the particular sculptures I've used, one is very famous, of course, it's the, the face of the, the dying Gaul, and so, so, so that with an, instead of his uh, necklace, I put the, the wire around his neck. Uh, uh, the, one of the things, if you try to paint, uh, you paint sculptures, of course, they are sculptures, the eyes don't look realistic, but of course, that's what you want. You, you get away from that simple realism, but you know, that you can see it's a, oh, it's a sculpture, but it's as a real person. And it, once you've got away from that naturalism, you can use the brightest, most bold colors, the most gra graphic designs. And I use a lot of pastel because you get that immediacy. If you try to paint, if, if you get away from that naturalism, with oil paint, you can make it look extremely naturalistic. But the more naturalistic you make it, the, the less you've got that kind of visceral response. With the particular painting, the, um, the crucifixion, I wanted to make a crucifixion. I'd already done several crucifixions when I painted the Stations of the Cross. Uh, and I'd done a large crucifixion um, just because I wanted to do one. Um, but of course that puts it in a very religious context. Basically for those poor soldiers who are hanging on the wire, it is essentially, uh, amounts to a crucifixion because they're hung on the wire, and probably difficult in breathing. I mean, all this horrible discomfort and slow death is what they were often doomed to. So I wanted to, to have that like a secular um, depiction of a crucifixion with all that um, sort of heavy baggage of re religious crucifixions. I wanted to do something with Jones's imagery of um, his descriptions, and he puts in all this references to, because um, of course he was a very convinced Roman Catholic, rather um, strange one in many ways, but he did believe very sincerely in, in, in that. Um, so, I, and he did his own crucifixions of um, Christ being crucified by um, Tommies, British British soldiers in in nineteen of nineteen sixteen, whatever their their um, tin helmets on, uh, you know, playing dice uh, uh, below the cross. Well, that's what I wanted to do with my sort of crucifixion on the wire, but replacing the cross with um, with the wire, uh, but having the Christ-like figure. The and I took a statue of a Celtic. Um, uh, God, I suppose, that was dug up, um, a famous statue dug up in Germany as the Christ-like figure, a deposition on one side coming down from the cross, which I took from um, a, a terrible accident in Bangladesh. They were taking a body down. I had a photograph of that. Uh, when I was painting my crucifixions, I became obsessed with the, the bad thief, the Gestus figure. I mean, everyone knows that the, famously the, the good thief goes to heaven on that very day because Jesus says he will. Did the, old, the other one go straight to hell in, in, in medieval paintings, whatever, they show him being whisked off by the devils, you know, the, the God, uh, Jesus is being whipped up to heaven by the angels, but uh, the, 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 the guest is good. So, so I wanted that uh, German as representing the, 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 uh, the bad thief, but there's a sense of irony there because they're both Christian armies killing each other, what makes the German the bad guy. Um, so it's, it's, not meant, it's meant ironically that the, you know, the German probably just as much a victim of uh, you know, the um, imperial capitalism as, as, as anyone else, you know. But um, yeah, and uh, that, that, that's my motivation for it. Mm -hmm.